Welcome to Gotta Run. This is Will Sanchez. Thank you for tuning in. My special guest today is Philippe Day. He runs with the Paragon Runners Group. But I met Philippe back in Nike Town, probably in 2008, in the era of Kenley. Philippe is much, much beloved by his team. In fact, he is known as Uncle Phil. I am thrilled to have Philippe as a guest. Thank you, Will. It's an honor to be on your show. Uh, I'll never forget the era of Kindly back in 2008. So that's when you joined uh, Nike Town and yes, Kindly? Yes, I joined Nike Town and quit Kindly, but uh, it was while running with Paragon, and Nike used to run on Wednesday at Paragon. They used to have a speed work every Wednesday. That's right. East River track, sometime on the, on the Hudson also, and it was every Wednesday. I remember the coaches there we had. Mm -hmm. uh, Brad Weiss was one of the Pacers. Yes. He, was, he was great. And what was the name of that coach? Which one? Oh, I remember this wonderful woman coach. And she got married with Kate, Coach oh, Kate. Yes. That Kate was, Pfeiffer. That was, that was a while back. <sighs> You're going to my best days of running. Those were the good days. With Nike and Paragon, mm -hmm. as you said, on Wednesdays. Both teams were like a family. And I met a lot of, a lot of, a lot of good people. And uh, we stayed friends to those days. You know, it's a, it's a great community. It's yeah. a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. But before we go into this great community, let's introduce you to our audience. Tell us where you were born, something about your growing okay. up years. I was born in Haiti, Port-au-Prince, Haiti, and moved to uh, New York, Brooklyn to be exact, uh, early 60s, and stayed there till 1944, 1974, and then went back to Haiti. Uh, finished high school and came back to the U.S. in 1978 to attend college, uh, uh, went to U.M. I mean, Haiti's always in the news, either because of uh, dictatorships or, or great disasters. So what was it like to, be, to grow up in Haiti? I had some really good time in Haiti. I still do. I go back, uh, I, back and forth between New York and Haiti. But it's sad to see the way the country is. Uh, there's so much beauty in Haiti, so much to do in Haiti, but yet nobody's willing, nobody's willing to do anything. Even the international community, which is supposed to be helping, uh, but they're not really doing much. Yeah. Uh, a lot of corruption. It's so sad, uh, I, I, I know, Americans, most Americans, you know, want to support Haiti, have supported Haiti, gave, gave many, many millions of dollars, but yet we don't know where the money went. Uh, the, the, the people in general, well, we could be the, the American people or the French people that are donating. They're doing it with, with the heart and it's a good thing, but it's the people who are managing the money. That's where the problem is. Uh. That's what the problem is. Uh, yeah, that's something that uh, oh, I guess only the Haitian people can solve at some point. It's only so much I would think that would the, the yes, international yes community and no. can yes do. Yes and no. Yes and no. Because sometimes, uh, even if there's the will from the government, but there's always a lot of negotiation going. We had the Haitian run in uh, in New York in support. Yes, uh, after the, the earthquake. Uh, after the earthquake, yes. You know, I had, uh, as you know, I had Christine from France run, and and she was so eloquent about bringing runners together. And one of the things we forgot to talk about was the Haiti run. We mm -hmm. talked about the Japan run, run mm -hmm. yes. and the Scotland run, the which Scotland I think run. they just did away with. I think yes. the last year yes. was the last, last one. Year was the last They're going to do something else. But we did the Haiti run, which was a beautiful run, you know, in support and in solidarity yes. of Haiti. So the running community is very much, mm -hmm. you know, in support of, uh, of Haiti. And, you know, yes, not country. only the running support of Haiti, but you had, uh, I had the opportunity opportunity to meet Sean Penn, uh, which came to Haiti after the earthquake, and I wrote a project uh, for him about running because he started a running group uh, in Haiti. Excellent. And he sponsored uh, five runners, three men and two women, which they took part in the New York City Marathon like two years straight, and I helped, I coached them also. And uh, one of them is uh, 44 years old, and he did it at two hours 36. <laughs> and that's not with a lot of training. 
Uh, but that was good. And he's Haitian? He's Haitian. My God, that got to be the, the national record for... Uh... Well, that's not the national record because uh, we have somebody in Haiti who ran in the 1980s. His name is Judonil Lamotte, and his best marathon time was 2.14. Uh, uh, 2.14. 2.14, that's world 214. class. Matter of How fact, long ago was that? Ah, uh, that was in the 80, oh, late 80s, because I think he went to the Olympics in uh, 1976 or 1980, and that was his first run. And uh, he was one of the last runners because he didn't have any training, and uh, somebody in Haiti took him on, and the government sponsored, and they gave him training, and then from there, it was history. I didn't realize Haiti had a rich culture of runners. Yes, yes, they did. So you come with a nice heritage. And I'm, also, I'm trying to follow in the footsteps. And also, the cooking I hear is pretty phenomenal. Uh, yes, we have the Creole cooking. It's excellent. And uh, we also have some special. It's called uh, Subjumu, which is given on the 31st of January, basically. Oh, okay. That's a special meal. That's a special, yes. Okay, special so you, do you celebrate that in New York when you're in here? Yes. Yes, excellent. we do. Now, you said when you went into college. What did you study? A business administration. Yes. Where did you go? University of Miami. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> because you went back and forth to Haiti. Back and forth to Haiti. Oh, excellent. Back and forth to Haiti. So, well, well tell us the history of, of running. Why did you start uh, running? I started running uh, because I was very active in sports, but I used to play basketball like five times a week and play tennis all the time. This but, is back in Brooklyn when you lived there? Yeah, no, back in uh, Haiti. Haiti. Okay. And I went to the doctors for a checkup, and uh, my cholesterol was like, 330-something, and the doctor said, listen, you change your lifestyle or we have to be on medication for life. And How old were you when that happened? I was in the 40s, basically, oh, because I started late, running. A little yeah. later in life, yeah, I started. Yes, I started running late. I started running maybe 10 years ago. Okay. Was that the, uh, the recommendation to... No, the recommendation was to change my nutrition and then be more active. I thought I was very active. It's tennis and basketball. Tennis and basketball. But, uh, so I started playing tennis again, but it wasn't sufficient. And while playing tennis... I popped my Achilles, and from there, I had a rehab for two months, and then I started playing tennis again, and I was hurting, so I decided to jog, and jog in, and then I went to New York Roadrunners for a race. It was, uh, at the time, they were doing the New York City half in, in August. Oh, that's it right, the early the, days. The early days, and I saw Janet, I said, I come to run, say the race is closed. I say, well, I was traveling, I didn't get here in time. She said, how fast do you run? I didn't know anything about pace. I say, ah, I do the half and 125. <laughs> oh, good time. <laughs> and she said, well, since you don't have any proof, I'll still put you in wave two and blah, blah, blah. I said, okay. And that was my first race. My God. You those were the old days yes. of when they were on 89th Street. You can talk, exactly. walk right up to them. Walk right up, Janet, spoke to Janet. Janet Cooper, I believe. Janet Cooper. So how did he do in that first half? <laughs> believe it or not, I walked a lot, but I still end up doing 152. <laughs> 152. And I said, never again. And that's where I met a coach, Courtney, from Paragon. And she you know, started running with her and coaching, and my next uh, half was at New York City at 128. I did uh, Staten Island 129. and You improved dramatically? Yes. And this is by, so you joined the, the Paragon Run Club during and that time? During that time. Okay. But it wasn't official. They were, they were meeting there, training people, but they were not registered as a, uh, as a club. Oh, they registered, I think, maybe two or three years ago. Okay. Okay, well, they're still very active. Oh, yeah, they're, they were always very active, active. very supportive. I, I see the name Juan Frias. I think he's a very... Yes, he used to work at Paragon when I used... Kevin also, Kevin Montalvo worked at Paragon. That's where I met Kevin for the first time. He was working at Paragon. I think if you're anywhere near Kevin, you're going to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's true, that's true. Wherever he is, he like, yeah, yeah, he, you know he that he was there. He wants to know about you. That's true. That's, yeah, Paragon, it's interesting that they have all these satellites. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, the Kevins over here, and they, like you said, Said they worked closely with Nike Town in terms of the Wednesday speed yes. work. Oh, that's wonderful. So, so why did you come over to uh, to Nike? I kept going back and forth, but uh, I met a lot of other people through Nike, and Nike was like a close community. 
And it was like, I'm, you know, I was very close to a lot of people from Nike. And one thing led to another, and I stayed with Nike till maybe, maybe uh, a year and a half ago. Okay, well, and Nike came. has changed over the Those early years, they were trying oh, to yes. build the club. Yes. You know, when I joined, it was uh, Coach Ramon, mm -hmm. and then came uh, later on Coach Kenley. And Kenley, uh, yes. that's when you would join. He was there. Yes, he I was, was there. A He was a pacer yes. before she got promoted. Mm -hmm. So she knew everybody, and everybody loved Kenley. Oh, yes. And not only that, she was running... 140 miles a week. I didn't know believe, that. Because besides pasting with Nike, her job was to paste people during the day. So during, I met her one day. I, I couldn't sleep because I lived not far away from the park. I live like a block away from Central Park. And uh, I couldn't sleep. And it was like 4.20 in the morning. I got up. I said, I'm going to the park. And then when I got there, I said, I'm going to be the only one there. And I'm going up Harlem Hill. And I see two ladies coming up. Hi, Philip. That was Kenley running with somebody. <laughs> oh, I remember. She, she was a coach, so I guess she had yeah. private clients. She had private so clients, she, she, yes. She loved running and she loved coaching. She loved coaching But, you know, running. she had that charisma. You know, you oh, would yes. follow Kenley anywhere. Anywhere. That's true. That's true. <laughs> and sometimes she would take it in the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't mind no. running the extra whatever because no. it was Kenway. Yeah, and oh. before each run, she would coach you. She would show you direction, you know, give you little brochures on different things yes, about yes. running. Well, you know, it's, we're concentrating on Kenley, but there were... There were there are many many coaches oh, yes. after her and now oh, yes. that are that are just tremendous. But you know we certainly have fond memories. Yeah. Okay, but you got you went on to. Beyond being the 129, because you, I recently saw that you are a pacer for road runners. Yes, I'm pacing for New York runners. I've been pacing for them for the past four years. I coach the New York City. I run. I mean, I pace the New York City Marathon for them, the Staten Island half, the New York City half, and the Brooklyn half. And matter of fact, I just paced this past Saturday. That's a tremendous honor and it is a responsibility to pace. It is. It is a big responsibility because they're counting on you because a lot of them, they want to meet their objectives. So you got to make sure that you know what you're doing, Absolutely. basically. So, so I've had other paces. I think the way it works is they want to make sure whatever you're pacing, that that pace is very, very comfortable for you, that yes. you could do much better. Oh, yes. But they're not going to, if you're a 220 marathoner, no, like no. your compadres, <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to give you a 220. They might say, okay, we'll, exactly. we'll give you a three-hour pace, mm -hmm. something like that. Oh, yes, because for the, for the half is, when I'm pacing the half, not that I recommend that, but I don't stop. I barely stop for water or Gatorade because... I'm just having fun and going with the rhythm. I'm not tired or anything, so I'm just talking to them, tell them that there's water ahead, you know, encouraging them. But for the New York City Marathon, it's different. I hydrate, I take the gel, and so, it's a bigger responsibility because most of them want to be Boston qualified. Uh, oh, so which pace did you do when you did the New York City Marathon? Uh, past Three years I've done uh, the four hours. Four hours. Okay, so a lot of women there because that's a critical. That's a big group. The four so, hour is a magic mark for, for is. many women. So how's it like running with all these women? Uh, it's fun. It's fun. But it's not only women. There's a lot of people, women and people, men. Especially in New York City. But New York City, they have multiple paces. So sometimes. For, for some reason, this year I've asked to get a co-pacer. But every year when I pace New York City, I'm always the only pacer in my group. The four-hour group only gets one? I'm, only, I'm the only pacer in my corral. But this year I asked, I won't have a co-pacer. Oh, I wonder why. I guess uh, nobody likes you, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have other four-hour paces, but in other corrals. Oh, okay. But uh, I don't know. Okay, well, this year's going to be different. You're going to have a co-pacer. Yes, oh, I, I, I asked for a co-pacer. I've seen that. They've got, they got people together. Yeah, and, some, uh, some of them, they have like five people, five paces oh, for really? one group. That's, that's tremendous. Yes. But what kind of pacer? Are you the quiet type or you're like a tour guide? You know, you I try to be a tour guide because I talk to them a lot. I encourage them. I ask them if they're okay. If I hear them breathing too hard, I say, you know, relax. I try to guide them. But you start losing some people, like at mile 13, Pulaski Bridge. Then you lose some others around mile 16 when you get New to the, yeah, yeah, the New York tough, City Marathon. It's a tough marathon. It is. It is. My gosh. But, so what's your best time at the marathon then? 
The bass in New York City, my best time is 257. Really? 257? 257. Oh my gosh, a sub three. Oh, yes. that is congratulations. Thank I had you. no idea you were that fast. You must Try be very it. proud. Your family must be very proud. Yes, and I was over 50 when I did over that. Over 50? Yes. That is tremendous. But you've done, you done even more than the marathon. I think you did the great New York 100K. Oh, TGNY. 100 no, it's not 100K, 100, 100 miles. And matter of fact, I did it last year called the Greater New York. Uh, some uh, Phil McCartney uh, and Trish, they came out with it. Great and it's New York been, Exposition, 100K, 100 mile, kind of long time. Yeah, they have the 100K and the 100 mile, but I did the 100 mile. That was last year? That was last year, and I'm doing it again this year as uh, June 23rd. Oh my gosh. That's the longest distance I have done. And it took me 24 hours last year. This year I'm trying to do it in 22. 22, got it. Yeah. Well, 24 is considered, that's considered the, like, Equivalent to three-hour marathon, we could do 124 or better. Oh uh, yes, I came out uh, ninth overall, ninth overall, and the cut up cut off time was 30 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, New York is tough because this is an ultra that starts at, at Times Square, right? Times Square, 5 a.m. Yes, you go to Van Cortland, you go to Queens, Brooklyn, and back to Manhattan. Times Square again. Yes. Phil McCarthy waiting for it. That's right. I think it's the only certified ultra marathon in New York. I would in New York City. New York City. I yes. would think. I mean, that's a tough marathon because you're running in the streets of New you're York. Running in the street and uh, pavement. Uh, when you go through the parks, there's trail, but you a lot of concrete, a lot of concrete. It's tough on the legs. It is. It is. And of course, we got to give a shout out to volunteers. They're just a tremendous oh, group. Oh yes, uh, great. Great, great people. They are out there in the sun, sometimes no shade. You know, when you get there, they rub your shoulders. You know, if you're changing your sneakers, I mean, they give you food, everything. It's a wonderful community. It's a wonderful the, race. Oh, uh, the running community. I think community. it's limited to like 100 or 200, something like that. Yeah, there's always a lot of people on the waiting list. Matter of fact, last year I was on the waiting list like till a week before. I was training, even not knowing that I would participate. So that's a long oh, waiting list for yeah, that one. Yeah, it, it causes out like within the day when it opens. Within the day, within You've the day. You've got to be there. That's right. Within but luckily, um, some people sign up too soon, hoping they'll be ready. I've raised get people from all over the world, Germany, oh, yes, Iceland. Uh, I ran like a few hours with two people from Belgium uh, last year. We were doing, I think, Van Cortlandt Park together was three of them. And matter of fact, I think one of them won it. He was trying to do 17 or 18 hours, but I think he won it. I don't remember what time he did. Well, it's getting better known yes. because, like, like I said, it, it sells out. It sells out the, pretty quickly. Uh, within, uh, within the day. And you're going to do it again. All right. So you've done so many. Is there one event that stands out for whatever, whatever reason that was special for you? Besides the New York City Marathon, the Berlin Marathon, That's because special. I've done all the majors. I've done all the majors, which is Tokyo, Berlin, Chicago, New York, Boston, and London. London. Oh, you, in fact, I think you did London recently. Yes, I just did London. And you did London for a very special reason. Tell yes. us about that. I did London for Census for Deaf and Blind. Uh, they are a great organization. It's a non-for-profit, and they help people deaf, blind, uh, to maybe you know feel, I don't want to say normal, but to be included, basically, and to the community, running community, or whatever community, whatever they, they are trying to do to make it easier for them, a UK base. Well, how did you learn about that? I was trying to get into uh, London for the past seven years, and it is almost impossible to get into the London Marathon. Is it by lottery? Or was it it's lottery, but I don't think anybody from the U.S. ever got in. Oh, it is like, like the New York City. If you, oh, no, three no, strikes, no. you're in. No, no, it's not. Here, you strike out, strike out. You talk seven times. Seven times. Uh, even Boston. Boston, you could be time qualify. Or New York, time qualify, lottery, so many other ways. Chicago, same. But London, it's almost for London, for people from London. So I did charity. So I chose a charity that uh, was close to my heart because uh, three years ago, I met somebody from France, Sophie. She was introduced to me by a friend. Uh, a friend. She came down from France and she wanted to run Central Park and she's blind. And 
I was one of the person running with her in Central Park. Is this to Achilles or to anything? No, no, no. Just, she just wanted to come to New York and run. Okay. How did you find her? How did he find you? No, a friend of mine, Leon, uh, introduced me to her. So we ran and uh, I was not only inspired and she felt at ease. Matter of fact, we were running and uh, we were, you know, there was some horse manure on the floor and uh, she said, watch out, you know, she smelled, I mean. <laughs> she smelled it before you did. <laughs> well, I did. <laughs> but her senses are more in tune. Oh, very, very, very. Well, I, I had somebody, a blind runner here from Achilles, mm -hmm. and he mentions the same thing, that he can, he can smell that way before his mm -hmm. pace, but the thing that he needed the help the most was, was any potholes coming up. Oh, yes. Because if he steps into one, sure. it hurts. Sure. Sure. So that was his that was his only request. Mm -hmm. Please let me know when there's a pothole. <laughs> but uh, those that's one group I always give a shout out to whenever I see them, whether I'm training or running or pacing a marathon is the Achilles. And I was so proud. I have a friend I think you had on the show, Dale, who ran with somebody. With Sissel from uh, Norway. Yes, and uh, I. This is a great team, a great group. Oh my great group. I, I, I always feel so happy when I see them. I think the one with Cicel lasted seven to nine hours because, you know, she had difficulties. Yes. But I have to give that woman all the credit in the world mm -hmm. to to come so far. Yes, that's true. Despite so many obstacles. Mm -hmm. And to have the fortunate to run into Dale. I mean, I you know, know it's just She's a great the, person. Oh, yeah, Dale yeah. Sinclair, he's, uh, he's tremendous. So I'm glad to hear. Well, this is a small community. I'm glad to hear that. Oh, yes. Well, she's probably going to, not that he sees it, she's probably going to drag you into Achilles. <laughs> so yeah. you think you might join Achilles at some point? I've been wanting to, but I always have a commitment with the New York Roadrunners uh, to pace the New York City or to pace uh, one of the has. But uh, I, I approached them, I think, a few months back and told them I would, gladly be available if they wanted me. They say, just come by Engineer's Gate. We train there every Saturday, just show up. <laughs> so they I told me, but smart. I... Well, especially, you know, you speak French. Sometimes they, uh, they need, you know, French mm -hmm. trainers. Because mm -hmm. I remember the funny story I had, uh, I had Dennis Mahikoloff here, mm -hmm. and he got a call on, on Friday. Dennis, what are you doing Sunday? Oh, nothing much. Oh, okay, you're going to run with the Russians. <laughs> They're here and they need a pacer. And he, and he goes, oh, I've never done a marathon. I've seen you run, no problem. But Dennis, he's an ultra marathoner, okay. extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And he met with the Russians. He speaks Russian, of course. Okay. And they had the best time. I don't know if it's Achilles. It was just, just a group of Russia that mm -hmm. didn't speak the language. Okay. So it could happen. That's good. It could. It could. Okay. I would love to well, run with them. That's a tremendous honor to meet you. I mean, I've seen you at uh, at Nike Town, but I could never keep up with you guys. So we would greet, and at the end, I would see you again. I said, okay, I guess he ran, but I didn't realize he yes. did that quick. I'm Wrapping up, what are some of your challenges that are coming up for you? I have a friend of mine that's going to organize, uh, I think, uh, some marathons. I don't know if you've met him. It's JC. Matter of fact, I was just in Pennsylvania with him to do a back-to-back -back marathon because he was celebrating his 250th marathon. <laughs> so he did 250 that day and 251 the following day. <laughs> so some of us went up there to accompany him and to do it with him. Oh, that was recently? That was recently. Oh, that my was God. Recently. So this is your first, this was like a Saturday, Sunday kind of thing? It was Saturday and Sunday. Ultra marathoners are a little crazy. They can do back-to-back -back marathons. Oh, but yes. that's a training run. Yes, it's, that's what it is, a training run. Because th that's the only difference training for ultra and a marathon. You still do the same thing. It's just that you have to do back-to-back -back long runs. Long run. So you your it, feet... And you do it slowly. True. Yeah. A little so, slower yeah, than your one, fast one pace. Of, I had a, one of the people that did an ultra, and his saying is, uh, when you're doing an ultra, if you think you're going slow, Mm -hmm. Slow down. So, <laughs> <laughs> Go slower. <laughs> but there's only one inconvenience running ultras. It gets you slower. You can't run, I mean me anyway, I can't run as fast. When you do a 5K? When I do a 5K because it slows you down. It slows you down. Only that's, that's not true for everybody. Only one person I know that's 
been doing ultras and still runs fast. His name is Stephen England. Oh, he's great. He's the only one. After that, uh, there's everybody... a second one. It's, you got to see Oz Perman. Okay. He uh, he runs very fast. Well, he does very fast marathons. Mm -hmm. I think his best marathon is like in Chicago. No, in Hartford, two twenty, two twenty-five. Oh, okay. But he could run ten k's pretty quickly too. Okay. But uh, Stephen England, he's uh, he's an exceptional. He's, he is. He's an exception. He's a beast. He's a beast. He's a beast. He's always and then, ready. And then professionally, I, didn't, I guess you train people as a coach. What do you do as a for living? Well, I, I'm a coach, but I do not train people really because I, I love running so much. I like to be part of the running community. I help people. I could coach, but unofficially, basically. Oh, okay. Okay, I don't you're... get paid for it or anything else. Okay, you're a friend to the other runners. Yes, I just, I just love being around runners. Okay, well, any last thoughts as we wrap up? No, it was just an honor being on your show and uh, for having me. And I learned so much throughout. saw one of your interviews with uh, Sid Howard, the legend in the running community, with Julia, which is also a co-pacer. Julia, yes, she's a great ultra marathon. Yes, she's an ultra, and she's also a co-pacer. She paces uh, the New York City with I, me I also. know. In fact, uh, I think she paces all over the world. That's a, her way of getting in. Because yes, Because when yes. you pace, you don't have to pay the fee. That's true sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> what? Sometimes no, well, New pay? York City, you don't pay. I don't know about <laughs> the others. I don't know about the others. Well, listen, on that note, mm -hmm. thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Thank pleasure. you. It was a pleasure.